Right, training today is all about lead generation. So Raw Selection has a big focus on this for Q1. We want our consultants to build as much as possible in 2023. Of course we do because they're driving on their own personal goals and what they want to achieve. And one of the big elements, what we see in big billers here is having a list of clients, a list of businesses that you're working with, you've got strong relationships with, that continue to bring you business. Now in order for you to get that, Cold calling and pick up the phone is one method, but actual lead generation of finding and identifying prospects who have a potential need through various different methods to be able to win a lead, to be able to then win a search, to be able to then make a placement and hopefully secure them as a long-term client. So here you'll find the examples of the what we are using already and what's working for us, but also what we're not using, what we're missing out on and what the consultants need to be focusing more on that you can use to generate leads and win your next big six-figure client. Lead generation training. So I'm going to go around the room and I'll want you all to give me one avenue and one sort of particular method of lead generation. The first one's a row, loses. So, so I'm going to go around. So like you get them in. So let's go about pen and what pen's gonna be where it starts obviously first and easier. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mo and we're gonna we're gonna go this way around. So you're you're not there. Yeah, so we're gonna go um, I don't even know what we're gonna do. Spotlight. That's clockwise. That's clockwise. Good bit for training about that going over. <laughs> right, man, so we just literally name one, one method of lead generation. Target emails. Target emails, perfect. Nyan. Uh, through uh, candidates. Like candidates. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you're up. You said target emails. So, as Iron, hey, you can connect the message for a bunch of people you first. See if there's any. Yeah. So, you say you can but. You're up. Yeah. Cold calls? No, everybody said that. No. Colin said that. Cold calls. You're up, no. Um, LinkedIn posts. Yeah. Me, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Alright, okay. there we go. I, I honestly couldn't think of any else. Yeah, well, that's the reverse of it. Yeah, but yeah, so the side of generation on the candidate side of things, which uh, we still don't do enough of. We've got the metrics around the BD calling and BD calls, and we've got target emails on the board now as well, which is pretty good. And then our portfolio, we're, we're cutting down on the e shots. But we need to have a big emphasis on candidate flips and the asking candidates for business, particularly when you've got a CEO search on RP, you guys have got a senior, a senior ish sort of PE search, you might be able to get an associate. Um, seeing your associate search out of them, speaking to like a vice president type person who's not interested in the job and always try and pitch them a candidate. So, there's two ways where you can do a reverse headhunt. You can either mention to them just very brazenly open and ask the question and say, Mr. Client, I appreciate we've been, sorry, Miss, sorry, sorry, Miss, Mr. Candidate, I appreciate we've been discussing this particular role regardless of where we're this doesn't actually, doesn't actually matter much. So, you know, but typically, I want me to do my job properly if I didn't ask you this question. Is there anyone you'd be looking to add to your senior team at FirmX right now? Just give them the opportunity to say, well, actually, we've got some potential to move this with time, or actually, we've just done a lot of hiring, or actually, you know, we've got a search on right now. Just question like that, that's one way of doing it. Another way is you can pitch to a candidate like you're giving a BD for, which I don't think we do enough of. And um, now I'm going to relate this really to the portfolio side. Let's say we're speaking to the CEO in the aerospace and defence industry. So, oh yeah, just um, Mr. Candidate, I appreciate we've been discussing this particular role um, 
they could be expressed and interested in it. However, I've just spoken quite recently to the CFO in the aerospace uh, precision products manufacturing space who's looking for a move, it's got a lot of private equity experience. I was wondering, would you consider um, a profile like this at, at this time or, or anyone else at the C suite level? And just pitch it like you do in the BD call. We don't need to treat it any differently because, in essence, we're after the same thing. It's just just because the entry point is different doesn't mean that the way we the way we pitch the candidate needs to be any needs to be any different. Yeah. So that's, that's that's one thing we definitely don't do enough of. And also, when we're I know I mentioned this a few times as well. I'm not sure who else was here for it. When we get yeah, no, sorry, not interested on LinkedIn. Send them, always send them a message asking for asking for business for a candidate. You always just ask them, you never you never know. They might even give you some wrong well, we might need something in six months' time. But just any any time you have any interaction with something, you think how can we extract the maximum amount of value from that particular interaction? I know it's you know it's important to get clients and candidates on the phone, but in in the world that we live in now, you can you can get a lot of business done on LinkedIn. You know, even if it's you know, a few brief messages, you can literally never know. So you know, if you do a press call and they say, yeah, I'd be happy to move forwards, would there still be an opportunity to, to make that BD call? Is that more than appropriate? We do it, you can do a press call interview. I don't think we're in that time. So you could say, I've got two of them, if they're both happy to move forward, I could still. I do even if they're not happy to move forward. So. Yeah, but I would do if they were not. If they've all seen you, so listen, I work with someone who I think would be a good fit at a senior associate, associate level. Would this profile be of interest to your firm at this time? Like you would if you walked in a BD call or you called all this money. It doesn't we don't need to change the approach. In essence, we're asking the same type of person the same question, just because we categorize the call and calls in different different bits under, under different metrics on, on our board doesn't mean that we need to take a different approach. I just I changed how I ask the kind of flip now. Um, Instead of just asking and saying I'm working with this candidate, I, I, I leave it to the end. It's actually, well, aside from being able to help you on looking for a job, of course, confidentially, um, I'd also be able to help you in your current role in, in growing the team. What type of talent would you be interested in? And I got a much better response from that because it's just a lot more when it's me just saying, saying it and another service that we'd be able to offer you rather than it just being you know, well, who's hiring, what's hiring. You've got, like leads from so yeah, people telling me who the firm to reach out to and stuff like that. Yeah, that's good. And another another point as well. If we go if we go down the target email group, now we're all very narrow and focused in our own sectors. Look for the person at the firm who, let's say, aerospace and defense who deals with the aerospace and defense appointments. Either it'll say that they specialise in it, and some of them actually say who's the lead on what deal. So if you see a guy, a particular part of private equity firm, you can see he's on a couple of different. Aerospace and defense, either boards or just the size of the company, or you can even go through the whole industry. It's an operating partner. I say it's a firm they've got consumer size of the business and the industrial size of the business. You're not sure who does what. Go on their LinkedIn, operating partners tend to come up through this you know, CEO, general manager, operations type group. Look at the types of businesses that they've worked at before, and it would probably be like, okay, this guy's probably the AP guy, this guy's probably the consumer products guy. And then we're not sending as many relevant messages out. And maybe you can make them on those three tag them on the system as well. Don't be afraid of seeing an operating partner. There's, their firm's got 20 different tags on the system. And you go and they're just aerospace and defense, or they're just food production, or they're just um, HVAC manufacturing, or, or anything like that. No, it's probably not relevant for you guys, but you can, you can certainly see who's, who's interested in what portfolio the size. I'm sure there's different pieces you can look at inside the B for. Look at different ways they can work, or you can see what sort of investments they've been on. You can see if they're discussing whether they're leaving the healthcare investments because he sits on four of their boards, sending to the healthcare and um, senior associate. And that, along with being more targeted and sending the target emails, will just help them narrow down our reaches a little bit more, and you're going to get more valuable interaction from those conversations. What are the bits and pieces of lead generation does anyone else think we're not utilising enough? <laughs> I think utilising each one's clients. So, if we have clients on our side, I try to ask the question when I'm speaking to, to private equity, especially like, you know, vice president for his partner, is there anything you need for your portfolio company as well? Which is just relevant at the time. Because if you guys have got good relationships with people, we've got good relationships with people, it makes sense to use it across the board. 
So yeah. if you're providing a 360 better service than all that, it's just keep coming back to us. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we, we can get into the habit of asking, oh, do you need anyone at your, um, at your firm type of level? And I think on, on your side, you know, ask about the portfolio research, particularly on the uh, industrial side of things that we call it. And um, help get the cosmos as well. Mm. Or if we've got like a candidate interview with somebody, you guys can look for the company first and uh, say, this offer is the risk requirement, ask us to ask them out. Yeah, when we interview them on the kind of equity side, we ask them about the deals that they've done and what industries they've done, and if they're able to highlight them from our side industries and how they can give you a digital connection to you guys. And then. Yeah, so I think we've got a process in place, it's a big different conversation for some of our people to do that, but that's certainly something we can do. And um, what else would it would be for we didn't get a little bit more out of? I think um, connect with us because I've been, I tried it last week, so if you do, and if you get a tag email or a BD call and they don't answer or they don't reply, just get over the connection as well at the same time. So you've got like three different, they're going to see you coming in from three different avenues with the target email, a BD call and a connection message. So I think sometimes that would work. I think that's something I would really do because sometimes when you email, I want to get back to you. So you're always doing like a few days after you work, so I'm just going to do the same after you email. Yeah, good thing, yeah. Get them on the email, get them on the tape. So they're just, just sending a connection message with your email, you don't even send a message again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They see your name twice, yeah. and then if they accept, you get the option to pick for business again. That's um, worked quite well for me. And it's going to your network as well, and it's in the future. So. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, it's certainly all worthwhile, though. That's what you're saying if you send them a tag email, just send them a like connection message as well. Yeah. yeah. And also, there was one thing that I did last week that I got um, a better response on. Even though they came back saying I'm not on any looking no means, still connect with them because I've given out a lot of the ones that now connect to send them my connection messages. But I've done before where I'll just connect with them and they never get back to me. So now what I do is after my tags and emails, do the connection message, and once they come back to me with no response or no you know, whatever, I still don't connect with them, but a lot of them have been connecting with that for two weeks. I think yeah. that's something that we should all do, just in case you have that community, um, or LinkedIn, and you see where you post. You're working with this candidate, didn't you? Like, you already have that connection with your because you reach out to me just never know. Yeah, and also for the same, because we're just doing it as a city, you once you start connecting people in the city, it's like having like 40 mutuals, most people, so they just accept it straight away rather than even while you're involved. About the uh, when they say no one is hiring, it is still important to send them that connection message because then they're, 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 they are, they're not just looking for business, they're actually open to having a relationship. Yeah, send them all to them, they still want to connect. Yeah. So that yeah. leaves a better, I should say, better impression on them than just thinking, oh, they'll be able to speak to me when there's a vacancy if you've got the relationship side of things. Yeah. Another yeah. thing I also wanted to say is recommendation as well, because that's something I did last week. So when they come back to me saying that they don't have any current with me, um, I was what I've been asked is to say, oh, who would you recommend to me a network to potentially be in need of my services? And a guy literally um, said me to some guy who gave me his email number and whatnot. So that's the thing that I have to have late enough to so I think that's something that I know we already do, but I don't know how effective mm-hmm. it is in your market, but I think it's something that could still look to you guys and do for me so it's always good, just any, anything we have, any interaction to just send a connection message. Mm-hmm. Um, just, yeah, build your network, build stronger relationships. Um, and then not everything's a cold approach. It's easy to sell to people that you already know, or you've already had some sort of interaction with them. Typically, a sale takes place on the 18th to 19th point of contact. It's very rare it's going to take place in the first time. Obviously, it'll be global average, and maybe something that takes a lot longer than that, and it'll take shorter. We're sort of feeling the 18th, 19th time that someone's interacting with you, that's when the, the transaction will set up where it's going to take place. So it's not always going to come, you know, the first couple of conversations with somebody. Sometimes it'll take you know, a couple of years to you stay in contact with somebody and we're looking at a few potential searches with them and nothing comes up. So they'll be disheartened by that. Um, you know, so it's not always the, the right thing to always fall into the lab where you know, someone's got a need that they, um, that they need our services for, you know, Perfectly reasonable to be patient. Um, just wait. I know, especially when you start your career, you want something straight away. Or at the start of the year, you've not got any money on the board. Everyone's like, okay, we want to jump on the surface straight away. We want to do this, we want to do that. But just stay patient. Me giving long term leads is still very vital. 
uh, place a lot of business off the back of those sort of medium and, and long term leads. So they're, they're certainly not gathering results um, by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. So you're the only one that you're like outreaching to a certain pool of firms, you just hit like the same like 90 firms every time. Pretty much, probably a bit more because I do a bit in aerospace as well. Some firms that just pick up the odd business in it. Um, so there's a, a lot of firms I speak to that you know, more to aerospace platforms. And do it's a bit broader, and, and I get some general manufacturing as well. So you get in effect, but in essence, we are speaking to some sort of people. So you just speak to like the same pool of firms time and time and time again until the moon. Okay, just well, just until the government has a particular need, and then off, off the back of that, we can have a conversation about it. Yeah. I think the more you reach out to them, the more they recognise, because that's something I learned from customers, that we build out our markets, we just have specific firms. Rather than messaging firms, I was talking to you about this in Friday about messaging different firms that don't necessarily um, work in the market. So, what we've done is we've made well, I've created a list of people firms that actually invest in customer money and consumer businesses. So, I've been just in the list of people, even though they're not getting nothing out of it, but the fact that they know you have that small profile, they could reach out to me then. So it's not very social now, right now. Yeah. You're talking on the stage. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that I've wanted to be asked now, because I know obviously a lot of what you're doing about the emails now, because um, I know some, some of, I'll say 55% of my people, of my, uh, people that I invest in consumer or have consumer uh, thing, most of them are clients of you guys, and I can see you now people that want to send emails, I'm not going to write these into emails to all my clients. You get one of the time. Yeah, you know, you need an email or contact. Okay, cool. Because as long as someone's not tagged as a customer, I'll do my contact. I think just if you, anyone ever sees some people already contacted in the day, I can schedule it to either do it a couple of days later. Yeah, so I'm not sending them to the same person another email on the same day. This is, is that really possible for me and all these If I see you guys have done some, I don't then send them an email again the same day. Okay. I'll wait until like either a couple of days later. But I'd be more than welcome to contact. Because I know that's what we're talking about, not contacting one contact. I just don't like when people change. Oh, so, so sometimes yeah, don't change your past. Some people work. So yeah. I know you haven't done that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no problem. I just don't like because I have a certain list of people that I'll reach out to, yeah. and then I might forget yeah. one or two people. So it just it's a bit of a pain. Yeah, so don't change. You can message other people for contacts, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that you have more contact um, unless unless you, unless you speak to that person. I don't speak to that person. So why do you why do you start? To yeah, I'll just say to them and be like, yeah, okay, it would probably be more benefit to you. I'll just put a note in my outlook if you want to keep contacting me. I don't care about changing the conversation for that, guys. Just, okay, just a. Uh, well, no, I'm not finished. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, just, <laughs> just, just to recap, um, candidate flips, going the same sort of pitch as you would on um, a regular BD call. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, slightly different and make it awkward. Plus, you'll probably find it, you'll probably find it a bit easier as well if you just you're going to do a BD course script. It's not like you're going to start tripping up over your words. And then a lot of what we spoke about sending those connection messages to anyone that we've interacted with um, on, the, on the target front as well. I think the main takeaways from this and then uh, also recommending uh, private equity, recommending portfolio services, and portfolio recommending private equity services to clients. Does anyone have any questions about anything we've had a chat about today? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick